Hey guys, Scott Tabor here. In this video, I want to show you how to play a basic reggae rhythm for guitar, but see if we can also figure out how to play the role of the bass and the drums on acoustic guitar. What makes any rhythm more interesting is syncopation, where we're accenting between the beats, or when we say the word and very often. And the reggae beat is our best entryway into syncopation because it's completely regular. In a reggae, we're just playing in between every single beat, going one and two and three and four. And so the chords that we're going to use for the song are going to be the chords for I Shot the Sheriff by Bob Marley. But this rhythmic pattern you can fit into almost any reggae song you've ever heard. I am going to be using bar chords in this song. A lot of people hate bar chords, myself included. But in most songs, you don't have to be squeezing the entire time on these chords. We can be relaxing just about half the time to get a mute effect. And that's certainly going to be the case here. Let's just start out with the basic thing that the guitar does in a reggae song. Now, we don't have to play the whole chord in this case. We'll do a half bar on the third fret. That's G minor. In a minute, we're going to play a big fat G minor this way. Now, all we're going to do is play a block chord and then relax over here, like I was saying. We don't have to be squeezing the whole time. Now, you could also get that mute effect by touching the strings in your right hand, but it's a lot easier to just stop squeezing, and we probably want, wanted to stop squeezing anyway. So we're playing in between every beat. One and two and three and four and now when you practice this, you should be tapping your foot on the beat or playing to a metronome and making sure that you're playing in between the clicks of the metronome or in between your foot taps because if you don't do that, you'll start to probably misinterpret where the beat is because it's so regular that you're going to want to start playing on the beat there. Right? So we need to have a reference point. So from tapping, if you're tapping your foot, one, two, three, four, in between, and two, and we really want to feel where those accents are. Now slide this up to the 8th fret and we have C minor. So that was pretty easy. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and we're back. 2 and 3 and 4 and 1. We've got to really feel this for the whole song before going to the next part that we're going to add. 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... Let's look at the verse chords real quick. We're going to play an E flat major chord. Just take a D chord. Now, again, I'm muting the fourth string, so we don't want to hear that. Only playing the treble strings right now. Take a D chord up one fret, and you got E flat major. And we're going to leave your ring finger down to D minor in a second, and then we're going to be back to G minor. That's the verse to the song. So we're going to go one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. So I would encourage you to try to play that over the recording. And in the recording of I Shot the Sheriff, there's a lot of things happening there, but you can still fit this in there. Let's look at that ending riff, which is the minor pentatonic scale. That is nothing more, nothing less, and literally nothing more or less than the G minor pentatonic scale. Going in reverse, and then back up right there. Of course, that has nothing to do with reggae, but it's a cool riff to put in at the end of this. So once we have that down, let's see if we can add the bass in. So the bass is going to happen on the first and the third beats. Now we need to play the full bar chord. So your thumb will play this string, where it will alternate those bass notes in a second, but just keep your thumb playing the sixth string every time. And now we're going to start to have a reference point in the music we're playing, rather than just our foot tap or the metronome going. So what's going to happen with the thumb is you're going to go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and we don't want it to last too long it can last a little longer than the notes that we're going to play in a second but sounds like this one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one Notice how I'm relaxing the bar chord in between every single beat. So again, half the time I'm squeezing, half the time I'm not. So it's a bar chord, but it's not as hard of a bar chord as we thought it would be. So we're going one and relax and three and relax and. Notice how these are cut pretty short. There's definitely a gap of silence between them. We would call that staccato, then they're not connected together. One and, nice and short. But if you listen to the bass, I'm holding those out for the whole beat a little bit longer, like this. Instead of going like that. So there's a definite, definite difference between what's happening in the bass and what's happening above. Okay, now let's move between G minor and C minor. So if you know how to play C minor here, you can do that. But I'm just going to take this shape all the way up here to the 8th fret, like we did earlier with our partial bar, and play it there. Okay, so we're going 3, 4, 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and scoot it up. Now 
let's try to alternate the bass. So every other time we're going to hit another note in the chord. When the first, at the beginning of every measure, we want to hit the root of the chord, in this case G. And then really anything else in the chord is up for grabs, but I'm going to play the fifth because it's on the next string. So let's try it. One and two and three and four. Now at this point, there's a really inviting gap on the two and the four, and that's the perfect place to put in our drum beat. If you've heard of a backbeat before, that's when you have a snare drum hitting on the second and fourth beats in the measure. They call it a backbeat because it's in the back of the measure as opposed to the front, which was one and three, and that's where we're playing the bass. So now we're filling in all the beats of the measure. In between every beat, we still got those chord stabs happening on every and. So before we do that, let's figure out how we can get a snare sound. So you hear a lot of people doing this on YouTube, especially where you play with a side of your thumb like this. You get a snare hit, you could do that. You can also use your knuckles and a little bit of your thumb. You can knock on the guitar, but that's probably gonna take us too much time to do in this case. In a lot of uh, rumba, flamenco stuff, we'll just slap this way. I think that that's also gonna take too much time for us. So the way that I'm gonna do it is gonna be a little bit of a knuckle slap. I'm kind of approaching the strings, getting ready for the block chords I've been doing, but also I'm putting an extra emphasis on my thumb here so that my thumb quacks the sixth string mainly, but I'm really aiming just for the bass strings. And I wanna get this rattly snare sound of the strings buzzing against the fretboard. And that sounds pretty cool. Totally sounds like a snare drum if you can get it going that way. So um, before we put it all together, let's try to put that slap in there on the two and the four. So we go one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. You gotta break these things down into their basic elements before you put them all together. That way you really know what you're doing. Now let's go back to the bass. The bass was this, right? One and two and three and four and one and two, three and four. Now we're gonna slap one and two and three and four and one, two, three. Now that alone is a pretty cool beat, but there's nothing reggae about it yet, right? This might take some time to get this down, coordinate that. One, two, three, four. Now, like I said, the reason that I'm slapping the way that I am is because my fingers, if I did it like this, I would have to reorient my fingers to get into this block chord. That's what we call it when we play a few notes at once, uh, kind of with your fingers in a group like this. So I'm trying to approach the strings with the block chord in mind while getting that slap. So let's put everything together, the bass on the one and the three, the slap on the two and the four, and every and, between every beat, we're playing those three treble strings. Okay, here we go. One and two and three and four and one and slap and three and three. cool rhythm when you get it down. Let's take a look at other chords. Earlier we played E flat major this way. Well, the whole thing might look like this. Of course, any way that you can play E flat major is up for grabs. I think this is our best bet, as crazy as that sounds. Playing the C form of E flat major. And if you can do that, let's go ahead and play C minor this way now, because we're right there. We practically already had that chord formed. And then we're back to G minor, is that, that chord form. And we can play D minor, also with a bar, up two frets. That's gonna look like this for the verses. Let's break this down one more time to figure out exactly what's happening just on a G minor chord. So we started out with just the treble strings playing one and two three and four and then we added the bass on the one and the three that's one and two and three and four and, and then we slap the strings on the two and the four one and two and three and four and i hope that helps you get into syncopation and get into slapping the guitar when you play solo guitar it's super fun to try to incorporate some of those elements that you would hear in a rock band the bass the drums all those things we can put together when we're playing solo guitar